I had an interesting day yesterday. I was arguing with Turf Twitter. Now, I, I would assume that most of you know what TERFs are, right? So the, the acronym is Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminists. These are people who are generally, at least hypothetically, maybe sort of would consider themselves on the left politically and or are also in the either lesbian, gay, or bi community, but are, are anti-trans. Uh, essentially don't think that trans women are women don't uh, don't they have fears that they often voice about like well what if uh, trans people did this or tra what if trans people what if a trans person raped a, a woman you, you know would they say would you say that oh that person is a woman even even though uh, even though their their genitals were still male, like th these are the thing. These are it's kind of like it's sort of a mixture of oh, lo hate the sin, love the sinner. That's like a part of it. That that feels like that's a part of it. And then there's this other part that is the uh, there's almost a, um, a a teach the controversy kind of thing. They're like, well, you know, we think that. Uh, the the jury's still out on whether sex and gender are not are, are not are intertwined or not or something like that. But I mean, sex and gender are, are not certainly not the same thing. But there's some people that think they're very essentialist about that. Like, well, if you are a man, then you're a man, and you, you can't just you can't just become a woman. And and um and there are all these uh, you know you get the various jokes about like oh I'm just gonna be a man today and then a woman tomorrow completely ignoring the vast majority of trans people where this is not this is not how any of this works you know as, as they say so and you get the the usual uh, attack helicopter jokes which are yeah in uh 2022 there are still people making the attack helicopter joke some dude said i have decided that i'm going to be a pumpkin and and uh, my, are you saying that my pumpkinness is is under threat, or or you know, are you saying that I can't be a pumpkin or something? I'm like, ah, like wow, it's the attack helicopter joke. That is fantastic. So, what where this started was, and and I mentioned I mentioned this a few weeks ago. So, like Dave Silverman, who's who used to be the uh, the head of American atheists. So he used to be he used to be liberal, and now he's conservative. Uh, he he will never say he's conservative, but he parrots all of the conservative talking points. He loves people like James Lindsay and um, Melissa Chen, or what? No, not Melissa Chen. Lauren Chen, I think her name is. So. Um, all kinds, Tim Pool, he loves Joe Rogan, he loves all of these people who are either right-wing or are in this sort of like, well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just, uh, it's the left that's gone way over here and I'm just staying where I am kind of thing. And I figured, well, I've been giving Dave so much crap about his tweets about, uh, not not just about, he, he's tweeting about COVID and all kinds of nonsense about that too. But, so he posts this. He says, I wholeheartedly support trans people. My child is agender and uses they, them pronouns, and I am proud of them for being who they really are. And you know what? Not a single thing wrong with that tweet on any level. I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. Good on you, Dave. You, you were, you know, I don't exact. I don't agree with your political transition that you've made, but but you know you seem to be a good parent <laughs> at least at least in that respect. So I was like, okay, well that's that that's cool. And then predictably he had he had people giving him crap in the in the comments in his comments. There were people being like, there were people giving him crap about like why would he do that in sort of a weird way in, in some cases. 
And so I said, David, especially since I've been disagreeing with you a lot of late, I want to say this is a fantastic message for the several reactionaries giving crap like the GGs, you know, these various people. How would you treat this kid different, his kid differently if it were your kid? And then someone's like, oh, I'm not treating, I'm not saying that treating them differently or judging is what you're doing. I'm pretending, I'm wondering if he thinks, as I do, that it's a fad, a phase, something to be in the cool crowd. I've taught enough high school students to know how that works. I would discuss realities with them too, though. <laughs> he would, so, so he would go to his kid who's non-binary. If that were his kid, he would go to, he would go to his kid who's non-binary and say, you know, I understand that you feel like you don't have a gender, but I just want you to know that y you definitely do have a gender, okay? Like, <laughs> and, and this is, I guess, going to be framed as, like, some kind of tough love, I, I guess. Like, can you imagine? Can you imagine being that parent who would do that to their kid? And I, I was just floored by that. And I was also very... I was shocked that also that Dave, uh, maybe not shocked, but I was fine. I, I was uh, fairly surprised that Dave didn't say anything about this. Um, didn't at least as people were like, what you know, uh, people got kind of defensive, of course, as you can imagine. And uh, someone was like, oh, apart from breaking records in the sport, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, all all kinds of nonsense. Here. Um, so you had people who were saying things like, okay, find gender to be a largely pointless and boring topic. It's become an extension of personality and or fashion. Sex is the factor that has relevance in any discussion of importance. What I found interesting is you go to those people's pages and you see a lot of people, and I'm not sure about this particular one. I found, you know, I found several where this was the case and was like was like yeah um so there was someone named Stephen Knight and apparently he's well known ish on the on the interwebs uh I don't know who he is but uh so he's but he's an atheist he's like one of these sort of I, I think he's in that mold of like from reading his uh, from reading his Twitter, and I don't know him personally, but it kind of sounds like someone is like, "Oh, Richard Dawkins is fantastic," and you know, Dawkins Dawkins has uh, been roped in by the uh, the turf crowd, and he's they've gotten him to retweet some stuff that has been pretty obviously anti-trans, but there are people who will not see it as anti-trans, right? So. So Stephen Knight, of course, having a lot more followers than I do on Twitter, has like you know forty times the followers I do. He he brings it to his page and says, you know, if someone identifies as a woman, they're a woman. If anyone is, if someone is raped, it doesn't matter what sex or gender they are. An American atheist and skeptic, twenty twenty two, amazing. And I basically so if someone and I said if someone identifies as a woman, then they're a woman. Gender it, gender isn't dependent on the chromosomes. So that applies here too. If someone is raped, it doesn't matter what sex or gender they the same legal standards should apply. There's absolutely nothing there's nothing wrong with that statement whatsoever. The reason why TERFs and others who want to basically say that trans women are not women, the reason why they bring up things like the whole, well, what if someone is raped and that person has a penis? The reason why they bring that thing bring that sort of thing up is to bring up the scary like these people are scary and notice when people talk about trans people in that way they almost never i mean never almost never they don't really talk about trans women or trans men rather they talk about trans women trans women are the scary ones right it's not it's not the trans men so that's very interesting, um, for one thing, and that's not that's beyond you know what that wasn't anything that I talked about in my in my discussions with these various people, uh, but so uh, go to the comments real quick here. So boonies for you, hello. To be honest, very uncanny valley seeing you at this angle when I've seen your videos for years. <laughs> yeah, well, 
uh, I started making videos over 10 years ago, so that's not the only thing that's changed. A um, couple wrinkles, I'm sure, too. But uh, yeah, it's a different angle um, now, that I'm, now that I'm doing more live streaming. Uh, many would argue that they are feeding their child's delusions. So General Shrooms, what, what is the delusion? So when I, hear, when I hear that kind of thing, General Shrooms, what I'm thinking is, oh, these are the, these are the people who are like, uh, again, this is back to the like, oh, this is tough love. Like, I'm just telling my kid how it really is, you know. Um, I, feel like, I feel like what people think the delusion is, is, is hey, you were actually born as, oh, as a girl, and you have XX chromosomes, right? I feel like that's, I feel like that's kind of where that comes from. But I can assure you that there is nobody, there's there's basically nobody that doesn't already know that. Like, they would be kind of like, well, thank, thanks, buddy, I, I, thanks a lot. I that's great, thank you. Um, so. If I'm wrong about that, if that's not what you're talking about, I mean, feel free. I don't, I don't want to straw man you, but, uh, but yeah, this is this is the kind of thing that I see all the time, of uh, people that are just like, well, I just want to make it, make sure they're correct on on what they think of themselves. So uh, Cassie says, as a 42 year old NB, all I can say is, ugh, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And if you've been an NB for any reasonable, reasonably long period of time, I'm sure you have have had plenty of questions and a lot of nonsense thrown at you about gender, sex and gender, and that kind of thing. And there certainly is tons of it going around. So with with Stephen Knight. You know, I, I don't. I would be curious to talk to him sometime. I'm because I, I looked at some of his other takes on other things, and a lot of them are. A lot of them I agree with. I I seem to agree with about eighty to ninety percent of what he says, but he's he's one of these people who is basically progressive on like almost everything, except for trans rights or for for trans and of course the what they'll always say is like oh well no i'm not i'm not for i'm not saying that their rights should be any less but then they'll but then they'll say these things like about the rape stuff and about the you know the scary like oh they shouldn't be in the same sports even if they've detransitioned for years like i get the whole sports thing i understand that that like maybe there should be a a longer time limit or something. If you're going to compete in those sports, maybe you should be on hormones for X amount of time so that that doesn't happen. Like, I, I get that. There, that's, there's some edge cases like that. But that's, uh, that's a, uh, that's not really, that's not really the major part of the issue, but they'll play that part up as being, the, or saying like, oh, uh, you can't have them in women-only spaces because they're, again, the assumption is well they're not really women when they say that and i don't think that's really great but maybe someday i'll get to chat with him on that but i i don't i don't think that he's i don't think that steven knight is particularly a malicious person and and i would be the first to admit that i i probably i probably came in a little hot on him um to begin with uh and you know i didn't didn't look at the totality of what he was saying but he definitely definitely did kind of in David's post he was kind of like uh or, or what he was saying about other things I should say not about the trans stuff the trans stuff was I mean he doubled and tripled down on everything um as we were talking so but um it uh yeah we'll see so so there were other people so when he brought it to his when he brought it to his page when he replied to me and I started talking to him and his followers so while I don't think this is a a topic that's necessarily super near and dear to his heart, he clearly has collected a lot of followers who believe that being that the trans rights issue is of extreme importance and they want to make sure the world knows that trans women are not really women. That's kind of what the how it ends up being. So <laughs> So this this person, 
I, I just wanted to, just so you understand, like where where when I get into these discussions. So this person is someone that definitely is very, very heavily invested in the anti-trans stuff. So I know this one um, said misogyny and arrogance, yawn. And um, that's, and by the way, someone who's a TERF, if you bring up that trans women are women, they often will see that as misogynistic by itself, mind you not any other you don't really need much else at all it's just uh, according to them that's misogyny so uh, that's fine for them so literally I said literally an hour ago you retweeted a message from LGB Alliance which I, I love that name by the way the LGB Alliance can you possibly can you possibly get any more clear about what the purpose of your organization is by just dropping the T and saying you're the LGB Alliance. It's it's a British turf org. So uh, what I, uh, I continued, I said, for someone who probably would say they don't hate, hate trans people, you and that org are heavily invested in making sure they're excluded from the LGBT community. And then she replies, Sexually, sexuality and identity are not the same thing. Well, yeah, that's true, I guess. Well, that's definitely true, except I, I think we would still see the issue very, very differently about who's, who's what and who should be considered, who should be considered how. Um, that's, uh, that's definitely going to be a, a difference. But, you know, you, you look at someone like this as Twitter. And by the way, when I go through any Twitter or anything like that, this doesn't mean, this does not by any stretch mean go to their Twitter and troll them. I do not want to give that impression. Um... So uh, don't do that. I mean, if you want to, if you want to go in and you know to, to argue with them or something, that's fine. Just uh, just be reasonably respectful. I would ask because I don't want to be that guy. Um, but so let's see. This is interesting. So yeah, she she's retweeting stuff like this was like something that she just retweeted this more like the uh, last night or this morning. So some feelings which I thought were unusual because I were trans, some feelings I thought were common were unusual with non trans people. I didn't become trans, I embraced trans. And so then they say it's not a cult though, and it's some by someone named Women Exist. Uh homophobic gender propaganda, warning I use evidence. You know, see these are these are turf channels for sure. These are all anyone that, that's this obsessed with creating channels that say trans people, trans women are not women, th th this always, see there's another, and there's another one, it's a turfinator, uh, what is this? Um, and these, these people always say that, like, oh, they don't, they don't think trans women are women, and then they also make that like the centerpiece of their online discourse about anything like they'll say that they don't really care about it or it's like well it's just this simple and blah 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 and uh the and then they that's all they can do is just retweet stuff she just retweeted this like an hour ago like more scare tactics about uh females you know men for five minutes female bodies don't exist therefore you can't exclude us from your sports and she's <laughs> just imagine being that obsessed about it, you know? So these are the people who replied to me about about this issue when I was when I was arguing with um, S Stephen Knight about this. And but these were people who I think unlike Stephen were again super invested in this. Uh, this one, Diana Badgersaurus. I saw this was another this was another um super uh so this, there's no such thing as gender just two sexes and seven billion people um sort of probably right although again this the interpretation of what you do with this if you're a gender abolitionist and you're like well there's no gender or that gender can be whatever it's like you Coming at it like this, saying, like, pronouns in bio, are you a sheep or an ideologue? You can only pick one. I mean, this sort of very, very clear, 
like this is the this is a big part of my existence is to is to be uh, anti-trans to make sure that trans people are not seen as women and and there's just uh, it just again women woman is women is not a dirty word like all these all of this sort of hand wringing and and sounding the alarm it's like they're they're ringing this big bell all the time this bell like alarm 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 this is bad this is you know this is scary this is dangerous women are under attack you know womanhood is under attack there was someone that also said like oh you know you, you're just completely uh taking a dump on like women's experiences and stuff like that as a woman like why would that be like why is that important that you exclude trans women from these spaces uh, so here's another one this one apparently from brazil you know so so this is what happens when you get into an argument in turf twitter uh they end up being they they sort of uh they close ranks and they they're all like oh you're you know, you're terrible for saying that you're pro-trans and uh, meanwhile they all want to think that they're not anti-trans but uh when when trans people are not validated um, that certainly leads to to violence and and misunderstanding and and they're uh, they're already under threat of enough violence they don't need more people sounding the alarm about how dangerous they are this is why trans people are in such harm's way all the time anyway so that's it's a terrible look so General Shrooms says, I think there are people that consider male-female to be a subjective identity rather than an objective and immutable category. Uh, I mean, if you're talking about the biology of it, I mean, sure, you're not changing your chromosomes, but, but again, nobody's arguing that. That's not what's being argued. Uh, an, an immutable... So if you're saying that someone... What would you consider a trans woman to be, if not a woman? If you're saying, well, uh, do you, are you just saying? So what? Some of the other people that I was um, that I was arguing with, they would be like, well, trans women are are not women. They're tr trans women are trans women, like it's a separate category. I'm like, okay, but if you were to put them in categories of say, okay, if you if you're to say whether someone is a man or a woman, if you have someone who has known from an early age that they were, and not that this would be necessary to be true, by the way, but if you're give, saying, okay, you know, the person from an early age is uh, is not born into the body that uh, that makes that uh, makes sense for um, for their brain, their wiring, um, and then they transition and they have lived as a woman for decades. Like you're gonna tell me that that person is still just a man I, I can't imagine can't imagine that to be a, a reasonable conclusion to come to and uh, yeah and Cassie as he said trans people in sports is a huge red herring it's one of the things that the, it's again one of the things they can throw out there to be a scare tactic and they think it works and to some extent it does work for some people uh, yeah, you know, one thing of Volbet says, uh, one thing I've never understood about turfs is why they care so much about trans women. I never got why feminism would gain anything from excluding trans people. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, they have the, they say they have their reasons, and they all have different reasons, it seems. Uh, they, they, they have certain things that they identify with. This, this, whole, this whole rape thing came about, like, with rape statistics. Like, if, if a trans woman rapes someone with a penis that, that they have a penis and then they're like okay but they get counted as a woman and so like they don't want that to mess up women's rape stats because it's super uncommon for women to rape anyone like okay so so <laughs> I, I have no idea why they think this is important it's not it shouldn't be important to anyone um, but uh but yeah this is um, because because rape is rape. It's it's terrible no matter what. And so having to saying like, well, I don't want that person being on my side. Uh, Cassie said it's funny seeing turfs trying to cope with the concept of gender and watching their brains short circuit. Yeah, and the gender stuff is is wild because there are people. There was there were literally one of those people I think I showed you said something like, oh, I don't care about gender. Gender. I don't care what it is that they they say their gender is. Like, 
like, okay, that's good, I guess. And then you go to their profile, and all they're doing all day is literally two-thirds of their tweets are retweeting these gender-critical people. So, uh, so, oh, and by the way, one of the, the original, the original reason, uh, the, one of the original replies to me from Stephen Knight had gender ideology in it. He, he referenced gender ideology, which is a term that I n really never hear outside of right-wingers. Which, in general, on at least on at least several issues, he's not a right winger, but he's adopted the right wing terminology for trans rights types of issues, which I think is telling um, about where that comes from. Because there are people that are well, I know, and I know people like this uh, who I don't think, are, are, or maybe like boomers, you know, people who maybe aren't necessarily fully in on the loop on the discourse of anything and but they are very much for gay rights etc but then when it comes to trans rights they're like whoa whoa scary scary hold on hold on you know then they 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 have very different opinions on this so this is interesting um i think that uh, there's definitely some exchange of exchange of uh, ideas there that uh, if I if I was if I were using a phrase that was often being used by the right wing for something primarily I would certainly give that a second thought if I didn't want to come off as a right wing reactionary of some sort who said well these now these people are getting too many rights and blah 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 so I wanted I would want to be super careful about that uh, General Shroom says, you would have to define what it means to be a woman or what a woman is. Uh, well, uh, sure. I suppose I mean, if you wanted to put together a full definition of that, I think, so I, I'm not a sociologist. My, my degree is in psychology and certainly these issues were, were not as frequently touched on back then as, as they would be now. So, uh, I would, I would say there are a lot of people who, have a much better handle on this on this topic in terms of being able to discuss it from a from a if you wanted to put together a taxonomy of like what is or is not a woman but um i'm not but again what would be the concern like typically there's a concern you said you said that the children are having delusions like so what's what's the delusion like and and is that is that delusion truly a delusion, or you just disagree with their classification, or what? What is the what is the harm that you're trying to prevent that would be more important than the harm of not accepting what that person's experience is? That that is really the root of it for me. Mm -hmm.